Hello, and welcome to the lecture on language for psychology. Language is simply words or symbols and rules for combining them, which are used for thinking and communication. It's how we're able to all get along because we can actually talk to each other. It's an amazing process. And now we're going to jump all the way back to kind of those preschool, kindergarten years where you started to really learn about your language without you even knowing about it. So phonemes are the smallest units of sound, vowels and consonants. It's that thing that you start to learn in kindergarten and in preschool where you kind of go S, S, T, T, P, P, N, N, M, Meh. And you go through all of those sounds. And what you learn is that we have more than just our 26 sounds for our letter uh, alphabet system. We have a total of 40 phonemes because we have things like OW, now, ow, that sound is coming through as its own entity, it's its own phoneme. Now, what happens when we go and put plenty of phonemes together or plenty of words with meaning together? Morphemes are the unit of meaning, words and meaningful parts of words, such as suffixes and prefixes that come together. So going back to phonemes, water has four. Water. If you put those four sounds together, boom, you get water. But for morphemes, if we take water, which is one mor morpheme, and we take fall and stick those together, then boom, we now have two together to form the word waterfall, falling water. Grammar. Grammar, the system of rules for using words, including semantics, definitions, connotations, and syntax. It is how we combine phonemes and morphemes to and words to make meaningful communication. It's all that stuff you've been learning in English class since you walked into school and you're still doing it even now. Now, language development is an amazing process. It starts the minute we're born and we start listening and hearing to the people talk around us and we are starting to piece together the sounds that they're doing and, and trying to figure out how are they even making those sounds. Either way, we have this amazing gift to develop language. And right now, between the ages of two and 18, you are acquiring on average 10 new words per day if you're exposed, of course, to new words. Now, children learn the basic grammar and language before they can even add two plus two because communication is key for getting your wants and needs met. Most kids can recall words and meanings and assemble words and sentences while simultaneously following social rules for speaking and listening. They pick it all up throughout their young years. Now, what are the steps kind of that they're going through? Well, zero to four months, um, they're basically just receiving. Uh, we start associating sounds with facial movements and recognizing when sounds are broken into words. Some babies at the age of four months then really start to babble and make sounds and gestures uh, that are multilingual. You hear sounds that definitely are not associated with your language, but the baby's practicing. But by 10 months, babbling sounds more like the parents or the household's language. If you live in a bilingual household, you're going to obviously have more sounds coming out of that baby. 10 or 12 months, we have the one word stage, understanding and beginning to say many nouns. Now, some babies start before it and some babies start a little after that. This is just the averages. So from tw or 18 to 24 months, we have then the two word speech where they're adding verbs and making sentences, but kind of missing words. So they might say see cat, something like that. Um, just simple two word sentences put together. And then from 24 months or two years on, we have then that rapid development, speaking full sentences and fully um, understanding how to use complex sentences. They start adding in even things like the word that randomly into a sentence um, to kind of add some enthusiasm or something like that. Um, they become highly skilled speakers. Now, we have two psychologists that, that we're going to be going over for language. P.F. Skinner stated that children learn language through um, imitation, association, and reinforcement. Babies link certain sounds to certain people. 
they figure out mama every time you do that hey mama responds mama gets super excited and has this great face and she also keeps just saying mama 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 and then we have dada for that kind of the same thing figuring out who is dada and that same reaction so when we smile and clap for words they are encouraged to repeat what they did and so they are starting to basically imitate and then get that positive reinforcement to then go and start speaking now on the other side we've got Nan Chodsky, a linguist who argued that children have a predisposition to learn languages as though their brains are hardwired to do so uh, even deaf children will develop hand gestures when given no instruction whatsoever so that they can communicate again to get your basic needs met we all need our needs met so what happens if a child is not around language? So birth to age five is a critical period to develop language, specifically syntax. Learning a second language under the age of five becomes more naturally to the child and they will just naturally pick it up and be bilingual. Learning under the age of 10 is still easier, but not as natural as a zero to five year old. And it is important to begin appropriate language exposure and education early so that language centers of the brain continue to develop. Now, language might never develop, though, if a child is not exposed to language by the age of seven. Of course, we have the um, unfortunate situation of Jeannie she suffered extreme abuse by the hands of her parents. She was placed into a room and cut off basically from society. She was tied to a potty chair. She never really learned how to eat solid foods um, until she was finally um, freed when her blind mother escaped from their house uh, from the abusive father and yeah reported her to child services um genie because she was uh over the age of seven she developed how to use words so she would point to something like a bottle and say bottle she would point to a toy and say toy ball uh different things like that but she never developed syntax she never developed the fluency that we have with language so language in the brain we have the Broca's area, which controls speech and muscles via the motor cortex. Um, it, we have Wernicke's area, which interprets auditory code. So if you would have brain damage in these area, in these areas, then you would have a lot of problems interpreting language, but also speaking. Uh, we have the motor cortex, which is, is controlling how a word is pronounced. Uh, we have the angular gyrus, which transforms visual representations into an auditory code. And we have the visual cortex, which receives written words and visual stimulations. So what happens if we have damage to the brain? Well, it depends where it is. So we can have something happen like aphasia or an impairment of language. Uh, think about how damaging Wernicke's or Broca's area would impact somebody's speech. What about what happens with patients that have strokes and they have to relearn how to talk? Um, we also have something that is very rare but can happen with somebody who has um, traumatic brain injury is they might develop foreign accent syndrome where suddenly they are now speaking with say a british accent or a french accent um, and their natural accent is not there anymore they have just simply picked up another so animals also can form basic language as we have seen with coco the gorilla and if you want you could go on youtube and watch a documentary on coco and her language abilities so language and thought linguistic determinism so the idea that our specific language determines how we think so we have a proposal that because the hoppy uh did not have a past tense form with their verbs that it's harder about them to, or harder for them to think about the past or aborigines which they do not have a higher counting system or did not have a higher counting system so they had kind of like one and many so if you would say how many children do you have they would name their children instead of saying well unless they had one um but they were named their children instead of going and saying i have five um you also have people that have a lot uh more words of vocabulary to explain something so can you think about something that you do not have a name for or that you have many more names for that maybe other languages do not something that you've learned over the years 
So being bilingual, people who are bilingual have numerous brain connections and neural networks that others do not have if they have formed this before the age of five. They also have a hidden talent, the ability to suppress one language while learning the uh, another. So it does help them later in life to learn other languages. And this ability tends to go along with other forms of executive control, such as resisting distraction and inhibiting impulses. So raising a child bilingual has other benefits that you know it's quite remarkable to have um, that ability to have if you were exposed as a young child so this was the lecture on language if you have any questions or comments put them down below and thank you very much for listening bye bye